This humble man from the village of Longsheng in Nagaland answered his early calling and out of all circumstances was used of God in regional, national, and international ministries, ending up finally as a channel of blessing on the Lord's mission in East India. Do rich the unrich. Just one, one time covered doesn't work. We have to repeat or take this gospel uh, to the people who hardened their heart. It is again time for us with all these uh, facilities to reach people uh, sincerely, to reach the unrich. In those days, we live in the villages, not town, no light, no other supply, and nothing of that sort. It was a childhood experience with fear that led Emo Tenjin to dedicate himself to the Lord's work and mission, developing a deep faith and dependence on his Lord. While I was in class five at the village, I was the youngest of the class, and uh, uh, the leaders, our friends, three, four years older than myself. Longjiang, my village also had a very strong Christian endeavor society. The men, by the adult people, adult unmarried, we had also a hostel, the dorm for the student. At one stage, there was a conflict between the leadership. Our hostel leadership decided that they would not participate in any program of the Christian Endeavor Union, CE, run by those people. And so one Sunday afternoon time, uh, they worked out the program and they put me as chairman to conduct the whole program. And so our, our hostel leaders said, no, you cannot conduct the service. You say, no, I cannot do it. The whole week, I was really struggling in my heart and also praying uh, whether I should really take that program and conduct the meeting. If I do, I'll be punished. If I don't do, then God will punish. That's it, in my understanding. And uh, we're all there in a different rows sitting there. And uh, the leaders are always whispering to me behind me, don't go there, don't go there, you will not go. If you go there and conduct it, you'll be punished tonight. I just pray, Lord, give me a clear, clear decision now at this moment. That was my prayer. So at last, when the second bill started, I decided I must go. I would fear the Lord. With what your punishment come, then the man, I'll go and cut up. So I went up. While I was there in the pulpit and then conducting the meeting, still I get a number of notes from our leaders of the hostel saying that yeah, you, you have decided to conduct, you are going to be punished tonight. Lastly, they decided that I would be taken to Ardi uh, Tungman, you call it a big tree. As a tree, uh, we believe in the whole village, a uh, Buddha's uh, devils in the village. There are many stories of the past that the eight night, uh, the Sadan passes through back and forth, and all the religious sacrifices of the hidden things are all there. The cows and then chicken, dogs, pigs, all the sacrifices by the non-Christian to the evil spirit. And so they said, I'll be there for one hour, one complete hour. And this is winter, December, December, very cold. And those days uh, we don't have the warm clothing, uh, the hardly one happened for hostel and other public gathering. Uh, they have those several bamboo cylinder where they put water. And the water is also become spoiled, you know, but red, smelling, rain by. And there are also flies in that. And uh, they took my shirt, they took my pen, and then they put the water on me, poured the water on me, very smellish water. From the head to the bottom, all the three or four water. And I became very smellish and also vomiting. And then they took me to the 
I read them when I was one and three. Three of them took me there and they left me there. You will be here for one hour. You don't move, do not come back, we will not let you come back. Stay there. We will come and then call you. And I was young, undergoing the punishment under the tree, the devil's tree. And I was so scared. All the stories these people told before I, left, I was taken over there <laughs> came to my mind, my heart. And I couldn't open my eyes. I was sitting there shivering and then closed my eyes. And then I was really praying. It is not only the shivering, but also the big, big uh, flies and, and, and also the malaria thing. All these are beating uh, in my uh, body. I, I really feel so scared and so afraid uh, that, that I just bow down and pray. Lord, if you save me tonight, the whole life I'll give you until I die. I'll not change. That was my promise before God in my prayer. After passing out his 10th standard matriculation in 1953, Imo Temjan went down to the plains of Assam to pursue the four-year graduate in theology, GTH diploma, at the then Johar Bible College, presently the Eastern Theological College under the sponsorship of the Ao Baptist Church Association. Later, after completion of his GTH, desiring higher theological studies, Imo Temjan went to the Sirampur Theological College near Kolkata, which had an accepted Bachelor of Divinity degree course recognized by the government of India. Imo Temjan completed his BD in 1961. Returning home to Nagaland in May 1961, Imo Tenjin joined as a teacher in the Clark Mission High School at Impur, teaching both in high school and the Bible school. After a year in December 1962, Emo Tenjin was appointed by the executive committee of the Al Baptist in Nagaland, ABAM, to be the general evangelist for the Al churches. Three appointments, actually. The third responsibility was Reverend Kijung was to go to USA on a meditation for deposition work. And so I was also given that position, active field supervisor of Aumungtak. In 1964, Imo Temjan was awarded an Ecumenical Overseas Studies Scholarship by the World Council of Churches. Which trained employed people for further exposure to develop their ministry. Now, in order to qualify myself for that scholarship, I have to get married. He was one of the leaders of that time. He was a very good speaker, very humble. The character, he was, he seems a very gentle, gentle, God fearing man. 1963, December 19. Next year, in 64, my husband, he left for USA for further study. He spent an academic year at the Colgate Rochester Divinity School, New York, during 1964 to 65. It was a good and strong churches in USC. That time, the churches are strong, conventions were strong, they had enough workers, they had enough money. I went to USC as the ABAM staff. They continue my basic pay without allowance during my absence to my wife from USC. I came just straight to Yimbo, to the same position yeah, as evangelist. Yeah. And also they voted the church promotional secretary. Back home in Impur, Imo Tenjin and his young family had a narrow escape in their mission bungalow. It was a dream winter, very cool winter. One night, it was December, it was too cold that we burned charcoal and close all the doors and windows, airtight. We were all sleeping. But uh, in the middle of the night, something happened. Atula, the child, the only child, was also crying. And when I get up, then I fell down from the bed, and I couldn't get up. And then my wife, the only one who, who was healthy of the three, she was shouting, and then op opening one, door and then call or chukidar and uh, he immediately ran 
to the hospital and then brought the Dr. Nashi. And then he discovered that the whole house is almost like burning with the heat, all charcoal heat. And then he came and then immediately he opened all the doors and windows. It was just suffocating with that one. Otherwise, had he been late for a few more minutes, would have gone our life. It was a miracle. God's hand delivering and preserving Emo Tenjin and his family for a larger future ministry to the whole of eastern India. I was also appointed uh, president of the Sivishine after my return from the study and then took my work at Abam. Ramon Gijong and myself kept moving all the time to all the other meetings outside of the Ao area and Sivishine area. Though somehow these people elected me as president of the CBC Day. It was Singha, the first national general secretary of the CBC Day, expressed that he would, he liked to resign. And so during that time, they decided to look for a successor. And somehow uh, in the executive committee, they decided that the, they would uh, ask Reverend Ayer to be his successor. I say no, I can't be here because it is Aung Mung Tang who supported me. But he said he wanted it. You talk to Aung Mung Tang, executive committee, let him decide for me, not me to decide here. So he appointed a special committee, the convener, Reverend Edwa Singha, Reverend Ore, Reverend Dijong, uh, the, from the executive, and then uh, the one from Carlo Hills, one from Manivor, all this uh, representative. And they came to Aung Mutang, Executive Committee. And they were all convinced, Executive Committee of the APAM and this, this group, that the uh, I should go. Sibishiniai so insisted that I should be near at Kuhati, taking my position as Associate General Secretary. And the treasurer was the missionary representative there from USA, Neil Jones, or C.C. Jones. <clears throat> the first year, as Associate General Secretary, I made a tour the entire CBC area of all the five states under CBC. All the convention and district headquarters to educate myself and the total life and ministry of the conventions within CBC. Another one was Karbi Angong. It was uh, related to the Assam Baptist Convention because it is in the plane. But during my time, in, uh, in two years of time, we got them separated and formed their own convention, Karbi Baptist Convention. After serving one and a half years as Associate General Secretary of the Council of Baptist Churches of Northeast India, he became the General Secretary of the Council in 1969. He was ordained on March 8, 1970 at the Gohati Baptist Church, Assam. After I, I took over the General Secretary as such, the intensity of evangelism work in Arunajal Pradesh started. That was uh, around 1971. During that time, Arunajal was another state. It was just a part of Assam. And so we make them that association related to Assam Baptist Convention. But uh, somehow or other, the leadership of the Arunajal Baptist Christian grew very fast under some energetic young people with the support to do support of the CBC Night. Earlier, it was the Baptist uh, the association are supported by the Mizu Baptist Convention. It was a Mizu Baptist field. But later on, the indigenous Arunajal uh, people founded by American Baptists with the help of CBC Nai, they become uh, bigger and stronger. And so they got amalgamated in a few years' time and growing bigger because other associations like Aumuta and then also Garros are also helping in the evangelization of the Arunajal. And so that is a, one of the extension of the Sibishine, eating more 
uh, convention and more uh, association this required. That is number one. The number two uh, is also Amri Baptist Association Meghalaya in Assam area. Earlier, former Mikri Hills, Mikris of the Assam Valley there, they have a separate convention still today growing with the headquarters at Kifu, Amri Karbi Baptist Association. And to that, CBC has supported uh, their program. They send their missionary, but the other program like schools and then the other social uh, program was conducted and uh, supported by CBC NEC. And still today, uh, they have a high school, a good high school, that was uh, founded and supported by CBC NEC with the collaboration of the Godula Baptist Mission. Reverend Imotemjan Iyer served as the General Secretary of the CBC NEI from 1968 to 1988. During these years, there happened a series of transformation and revival in Northeast India, which also resulted in many new churches being established under the banner of CBC NEI. During his 21 years of faithful service at the CBC NEI, Reverend Imo Tenjin was also appointed as the Vice President from India at the Baptist World Alliance. This further indicated how the Western world began to recognize the importance of CBC NEI at the Christian world level and the Baptist International Ministry. During Reverend Ayer's tenure at the CBC NEI, two major international events were celebrated. The centennial celebration of ABAM, All Baptist Churches Association in Poor in 1972, where more than 40,000 delegates converged together to celebrate the 100 years of Christianity for the Al Nagaz and Nagaland, during which Reverend Emo Tenjin was also the president of the centennial celebration. The second big event was the successful celebration of CBC NEI sesquicentennial in Dimapur, Nagaland. The celebration of the coming of the missionary to Assam in the year 1836. There were about 50,000 delegates from various CBC churches. It was a great crowd, big time of celebration with all the Baptist churches, almost all the Baptist churches under CBC Net, which is about by this time five to six thousand uh, churches, local churches, gathered in uh, the Mabur uh, American Baptist missionaries in, working in India, and, uh, and the former missionaries worked in the CBC Net. And not only our missionaries, but also the representative of the Baptist Rural Alliance even from non, non-Baptist denominational group from India, representatives were called and then invited. It was a four-day celebration of more than 50,000 delegates those days. The CBC NEI, uh, IMO, laid a strong foundation of the structure and the operational culture of the council. I started serving with the General Secretary, who is his successor. And I already see and experience the stability and the foundation Imbo has established. And since then, you know, I can experience a very capable leadership of uh, the CBC NEI leaders, huge groups of, you know, uh, wonderful leaders in Office India. So, so after the celebration, I requested the executive committee of the council to release from my uh, the responsibility and look for a successor. After retirement from CBC NEI, his family was invited again by the Board of International Ministry, BIM, to serve as missionary to the United States of America. In the USA, visiting and encouraging the American Baptist churches for their greater involvement and the global mission, the world, taking the example of the good work in Northeast India. Because uh, we were in darkness, our forefathers, it is the American Baptist Free Mission Society which brought the light to us. 
in Nagaland, in Northeast India, and in India, through the effort, uh, sacrificial life of the missionaries of the past. And so, if the really what does is the seeds of the labor of the past to tell them that we are here as your, the outcome of your ministry, and it is again and the American Baptist churches we should continually renew their effort to do wider missionary uh, endeavor around the world, even more than which they have now. As missionary for a couple of years in the USA, Reverend Aaron and his wife traveled and preached across the country with the call of missions for Christ. All over USA, except Texas and then uh, Kentucky, driving uh, the wherever is possible, wherever not possible, from state to state by plane. These American people, they are so friendly. Within a short time, they make friendship, they adjust with us, and then uh, working with us like we only. They provide a car. So almost every day, we are on the route. Sometimes we met an accident also, but uh, God was so good that uh, he saved us from crashing, sending to many churches almost every day, meeting so many people that way. And then presenting to them, to the churches, that we are the seeds of your labor. So, it is time again to do more than what you have been doing in the past, because the world still needs uh, the gospel for millions of people around the world. And for that, you have to strengthen yourself, but not to remain satisfied and stay. After serving as missionary to the American Baptist Churches USA from 1998 to 1990, the Board of International Ministry, BIM, again commissioned Reverend Eyre as India's residential cross-cultural missionary. We are, there is no missionary except one lady teacher in the school. And then the leadership is very weak and churches are not growing. And not only that, they are also fighting among them all the time. They are having some problem in the mission board, what to do with this. Three months I was given and reported to them. I came to Bengal Bihar, Orissa with their leader from BIM. The assignment given by the BIM to go all possible places, mission centers, and then the program, and then the churches, and then meeting the, with the various committees. Mission board wanted me assess their ministry, their whole work, and report to them with my recommendation what to do in order to bring them back to life. Three months with the help of the executive committee, move around all the local churches of the three big states. Lots of program missionaries started, and lots of them going down and taken over by hook and crook, those one. Only problem is there. Schools were all closed mostly. Hospital were just one. Nikoshini Hospital was going down. It's a saying with my own eyes, meeting with these people, I give them the whole picture and then make my recommendation. And when I submitted that one, then they immediately decided that two of us to come back, back to India, but to Bengal Bihar was as their missionaries. His family was posted to Balasore town, Orissa, in eastern India where they ministered in the American Baptist BIM mission fields of Bengal, Orissa, Bihar Baptist Church Association, known then as BOBBCA. The erstwhile American Baptist Foreign Mission Society, which had established mission fields and infrastructure hundreds of years ago, were unfortunately declining and decaying. And at this opportune moment, Reverend Emo Tenjin successfully introduced certain reforms, set up and oversaw administration of property and organization, strengthened the local churches, and helped revive the old and prestigious Balasore Technical School, which now continues to serve the people of eastern India. Good morning, everybody. Good morning.
and we are very glad to be here for today because we are doing it for real glory and real. And we are very happy here in, uh, in, in India. This, is, this program included in Malta. So all over the world, we are the behind Hyper and Mizzi. We are here in Jerusalem, committed to Malti also under the leadership of the seven here, Rami, and all of the delegates. The great things that you have done through this institution, for the churches and for the community, he served here to be an acceptable and honorable institution. Mechanical section what we have seen over there and this automobile section we have constructed together. So every new building has a contribution of Dr. Ayer. Without his uh, involvement, nothing has come up. Somehow or other I, I, I have a part in it, whatever is produced here. And because of the influence and then the information they also get from me. And then together we do the things. We are very happy. These are the new machines. As per the latest technology we have procured, first time in the of Technical School, we are training girls on the automobile section. And uh, Tata Motors, which is a renowned automobile company in India, they are supporting to train these girls' students on that course. So these girls will be trained, placed in their Tata companies, dealers and companies. First, part, when I did, I found it very difficult, but now it has become used to for us. West Bengal. Okay. West Bengal. Okay. Jharkhand. Okay. West Bengal. West Bengal. Odisha. Odisha. In Darjeeling, after past two years past, we just came here <coughs> to have a good knowledge about the uh, Tata Motors and automobiles. The mysterious recovery of the decaying Balasur Technical School in the state of Orissa, under the leadership of engineer Ramesh Kamur, with Reverend Ayer's backing, was indeed like the unexpected healing miracle that happened to the ailing person of 38 years at Bethesda. Today, the Balasur Technical School is flourishing in the region states of Bengal, Orissa, Bihar of India. <laughs> और जो स्कूल आप देख रहे हैं इन्हीं के वजह से ये सब कुछ बोलने से भी कुछ गलत नहीं होगा सब प्रभु का दया और आंसर का आशीर्वाद से हुआ इसलिए उनके लिए हम थोड़ा कार्यों के साथ और
And that is you. That is you. Yeah. This is the American Baptist Mission Boys Hostel. We constructed newly. Uh, partial help from BIM. And uh, we have constructed 20 rooms in memory of the past missionaries and uh, donors. And you, that was done during this period. Uh, he has dedicated the building, Dr. Uh, Reverend Dr. Immortal Jenaya. Uh, this is also the mechanical workshop during his period. And uh, he has again, he dedicated the building. In his process only he dedicated the building. Lloyd Eller was the one who started this institution in 1906. He was the first principal of this uh, institution. And in his memory only we built the Centenary Building. And uh, he raised the fund. When he went to America, US, they have talked to these people. And they have contributed a portion of the amount. Yeah, in one of my uh, deputations near the USA, so we suddenly went to his home. And then, of course, they were the host. And then we talk about the, this new project, and uh, they were anxious that this is done because this is here in the past while well, you were missionary, the native, their priority, you were very gladly accepted to raise the fund, and they did it. The mechanical workshop, they are doing the fitting job, fitting, mechanical fitting, punching, cutting. Uh, there are uh, 93 students already in mechanical trade fitter, a uh, second year. This is the second year students. Now, uh, practically is running. Uh, they are first year students also. Four states generally. Uh, Odisha, uh, West Bengal, Bihar, Jharkhand, uh, and Assam also. This computer center was the first initiative by Dr. Ayer. Uh, he raised fund before my coming here. In order to revive this institution, he was going around in the U.S. and raising funds. So the entire grant was raised by him. So with that fund only, we have started the computer section. And that first initiative to include girls uh, in the program, in the two courses. Prior to that, there was no girls. This is the computer center for girls. Uh, we are training. This year, we got 15 students on this course. These girls are uh, under scholarship from various mission agencies US, also from the First Baptist Church, Palo Alto, California. And another NGO in Bangalore, Indian Health. They are also helping the students to train the monthly offer. The Elizabeth Emerson grant, that was fully utilized for this section. When I came first here, uh, we were not having, not even a cycle for our emergency work. When 98, uh, we got a cycle with sponsorship from somebody locally. And as the days have gone, 22 years, the Lord has, Lord is so abundant to us, and His blessings are more upon the institution. We are having a big truck and a small truck, one Bolero, one Scorpio, one Honda City, another. Action and Marudi Sen, Marudi and uh, Commander, and we have five motorcycles to produce by the staff. So I have no words how to explain the blessings the Lord has provided to us. So the span of 22 years, every aspect, every angle of the institution is developed. Not only in one particular area, in all aspect of the institution. It is growing and financially we are self-supported and self-reliant. This is the machine workshop. We are still using one play machine which was purchased during the missionary period. It's almost 100 years old. And the rest of the machines we procured after we started reviving. Dr. I.S. contribution is still there in the procuring the new machines. Uh, we have a carpentry section which is very old during from the time of missionary we established and most of the machines imported from the US still working condition. This carpentry section during missionary time some of the furniture 
uh, the bill through the order of the central government in the new new delhi parliament that still the this is the section on which we are raising fund for our sustainability so most of the fund comes from carpentry section and again this is the steel fabrication section since the wood work wood usage is been restricted in india so we are getting orders from government railways and individuals so as i said these two section carpentry and the steel fabrication are the income generating area for our institution which given us the sustainability to run the institution out of these two sections we are getting about 2 lakhs each month yeah this is the centenary building inauguration by the collector district magistrate of balasur on march 2003 and again the first project uh, the building project 7000 square feet building this so again he is the man behind the fundraising so they are the people when you came in 90 they were still working in the carpentry section and welding and they are continuing almost now yeah. 30 now years yeah. i am so happy that you survive here at this institution so all this year we left this place in 2000 at that time working in the same we are the families which Imo uh, intentionally look for the best people they can find to uh, restart, restore uh, the surface of this school. So Imo was able to identify uh, Mr. Ramesh Kumar, and then a group of uh, uh, senior leaders of the Baptist churches, and to uh, reconstitute the whole operation. and now the balaso technical school under the leadership of mr ramesh kumar has flourished so much that not only have they restored what we call the past glory uh, so that young people can receive uh, training to find a jobs uh, in fact um, the school has done such a wonderful job that before even they re- they graduate you know they already have the employment i think that is very significant but also a great encouragement to families and and ethnic low caste groups you know who are so desperate to make a change of like their life the balaso technical school become a platform a blessing to them when they are seeking for such a uh, opportunity of change actually we came here to the field 1991 this building regarded by the earlier missionary My wife and myself had to live in Nikursini Hospital, uh, missionary bungalow earlier. And then this was this by PIM for us to live here. While we were here, the whole bungalow we had to buy. In that room, Reverend uh, uh, Reverend Doctor Imo Tanjan Iyer was staying when uh, he was here. That's how we live. Ten years. I wanted to acknowledge uh, Reverend uh, Imo Iyer's contribution to our mission field because he has served, uh, he has given his precious time to us because of his leadership only BOBC was formed. I wanted to thank him for for his sacrificial life for our mission field. May God bless him and uh, may God be with him always. And please remember uh, remember us in your prayer so that our mission field will be increased because nowadays very problems. and obstacles are coming because you know in india now it is very difficult to give baptism so please remember us in your prayer and remember our ministry in india i am reverend alan mondol pastor of this church pastor this is balasa baptist church i have seen him many years ago when he was here he was always there to help us come take meetings and doing his work i know him for many years when i in here this church was one of the strongest baptist church local church i met this church my church and uh, the, i was a change again and one thing that i uh, did with the church is that they had uh, just a temporary uh, the english worship uh, fellowship in the church not well organized one but uh, i discussed with him and then the other church leader to make it a church project because there are so many non speaking 
uh, Uriya are also coming to the church. From that time onward, they had that regular English service, a part of the ministry of the Palacio Baptist Church. That was a good testimony and then program for the student coming for the BDS from various different tribes and mostly the look Chantalis and there are many of them non-Christian. And so they also come under the school supervision in the English service. All is full because every year more students, now also 400, all those 400 come uh, because it is a school program. They have to come. <laughs> we yes. don't like them or not. But somehow or other that is one of the sources of evangelism, bringing them into the cyber. So the church is doing that continually uh, every Sunday. And since this being the uh, largest church here in uh, Orissa, among the American Baptist Church village, small, small villages in town, we respect in honor this church still today. Imo and Arena Aia have played a very important role in the modern uh, development of uh, the work of international ministries in India. Well, I think one of the most important things that Imo and Re Arena have done is to encourage the young leaders and uh, to develop disciples. And in fact, many of them become the leaders of the uh, Baptist churches uh, in Bengal, Risa, Bihar. And Reverend Samaraj Nayak is one of them, and Samaraj is now the uh, head of the uh, IM sponsored uh, India Mission Coordination Committee, who is doing a wonderful job in networking uh, Baptist churches not only in Bengal, Bihar, but also in uh, Northeast India and South India. It is India that is our our place, our country. But Bengal or Bihar, that also living, eating also different, and the living style also different. Everything a little difficult. And then again, language, you know. They don't, they don't know much about English. So many things to do. Lots of activities were there. But the, the most exciting for me, that is the sandalis, to work with the sandalis. These are the outcast, so to say, outcast people, no? When we enter to the place and then find out the difficulties, and especially the children. So many difficulties are there, but for the school children, they have no school. This is uh, the first school made by the Sandal Mission. It was really the combination of the BM grant plus Miching grant from PDS. The first school building was a tree where the blackboard was a, a nail on it and then began to teach in somewhere that side. We asked for emergency grant from BIM. Uh, we also asked the PDS technical school. Uh, to give the matching grant and then build it here. Later on, we also added one more room <coughs> because the students were coming more and more. Somehow, I also left and then uh, yeah, because of the leadership, it kept changing room, and then room. neglected somehow. Except you, you are one of the founding member, right? Founding school. And I'm glad that he is here. Now the present EU BBC Eastern oh. India started and then revive their interest. And I'm sure it will uh, grow well and it will attract more students. We understood the class will become very dark. As soon as possible, we'll finish. Our Santal Mission, Galuxai Santal Mission is to lay. Precious Lord, our Heavenly Father, for a long time we are anxious to see this school and also the children of this school. Oh Lord, we pray that you uh, help us to find out, discover, take these children and other children who are within. So, Amen. Amen. Where are you there? Why are they meeting us? He has, Why gone, are they? he has gone for meeting in Calcutta. Sandal is the iron interior place only. 
Every day they have to go for hajra, and then by that only they were supporting their lives like that only. And Arena also put in a lot of energy, especially working with the women's group, developed a lot of uh, uh, women's leaders who are playing a very active role in different positions. And also a significant contribution that I consider is that Arena has encouraged our sisters, you know, in Bengal or Risabiha, not just serve under their husbands, but serve side by side with their husbands because a couple is in fact a unit to serve God together. During his time in the region of Bengal, Orissa Bihar, Reverend M. Otenjian and his wife followed up and promoted other ministries too. Soul winning camps were held with inerrant evangelism reaching the masses for Christ. From 1994 to 1999, four camps were held each year at different selected rural villages. Neighboring villages were invited for five days of intensive evangelism, closing on a Sunday with baptism for the converts. More than 143 villages, 4,371 families were covered, with 219 baptisms during the camp. Later, follow-up was done by respective local area pastors and evangelists. Leadership Development Since trained local leadership was extremely lacking and poor, Higher theological scholarship was immediately established, and the first batch of three persons with bachelor's degrees were sent for BD degrees at the Union Biblical Seminary at Pune, Maharashtra. Others were sent to Cary Bible College, Kolkata, for bachelors of theology. One woman candidate was Miss Dipti Ghost for Masters of Divinity and became the women's secretary. From then on, every year, young candidates were sent for higher theological studies. Leadership trainings were conducted on stewardship, young leadership, and pastors' and wives' retreats for local leaders. Various revival meetings were organized, like the BOBBC Workers' Revival Week, Balasore, 1996. The BOBBC, pastors, presidents, secretaries of the local churches under the leadership of Rev. Lanu Lachar, team from Nagaland, 1997. Imbo and Arena. Uh, were my mentors because I was new to uh, the mission work uh, in India and Imo has already been uh, the general secretary of the Council of Baptist Churches in Office India for many years. I had uh, such golden opportunity to learn directly and personally uh, with Imo and Arena. In the new group, UBC A, wanted us to stay. There were 60 churches represented. They said, okay, we still need your service. So you stay for three years. But since the request was uh, so strong and, uh, and then serious, my wife and I decided and said, okay, we'll stay one, one more year, which means 2000. And uh, don't give us money, it will be free as a part of a contribution without salary. Just, yeah. So I was consultant of this new convention. Another milestone breakthrough is how Imo uh, and Arena uh, basically restore the vitality of the Baptist churches uh, in Bengal, Risa, Bihar, Baptist Church Council of Eastern India. After his service in these three Indian states, and as Reverend Eyre was about to go for retirement, the erstwhile Baptist International Ministries BIM, presently International Ministries IM, appreciating his sincerity, honesty, and hard work, requested him to be the power of attorney for BIM Properties of India. Uh, Imo has done a wonderful job, and we have achieved a lot in this uh, very challenging issue, and we are indebted to you for your contributions. According to Reverend Eyre, this assignment was the biggest challenge in his life because he had to protect and preserve all movable and immovable assets of the BIM against all odds, including intimidation, wrong and willful accusations, insults, and even court litigations. But with prayers and strong faith in God, he was successful in the protection of properties worth hundreds of thousands of dollars for BIM. After serving in ministry for his whole life, Reverend Emotenjin retired from the BIM Power of Attorney in 2018.
after my retirement, I would now again appeal that you have not lost anything by sending your money and your people, your men, your relatives, your parents, your grandparents to Northeast India particularly and around the world to present the gospel of life to the people living in darkness. Today still there are many who are searching uh, for their life, the best way to live. And it is time again with all these uh, possibilities of communicating to reach the unreached. And just one, th one time covered doesn't work. We have to repeat until losing soul to be brought to the feet of Jesus Christ. Uh, take this gospel uh, to the people who hardened their heart, even not to expect, accept the good news, though they know that there is something good in the good news is here, yet they are very often covered uh, with the evils of this world. Again, again, time for us with all these uh, facilities to reach people uh, sincerely, to reach the unrest. During his service with CBC NEI, Reverend Eyre was involved in various ecumenical and denominational Christian organizations within and outside India. He also represented and served in the following Christian organizations. As Vice President of the North East India Christian Council from 1970 to 1987, President of the Baptist Union of India from 1976 to 1986, National Council of Churches in India from 1975 to 1987, the Asian Baptist Federation from 1975 to 1985, and Vice President and Vice Chairman of the Baptist Council on World Missions from 1973 to 1990. Through it all, Rev. Emo Tenjin and his ever-present wife, Erin La, worked together for 50-plus years, commissioned together as partners in missions and ministry blessed with three successful children. Their eldest daughter is a doctor with the government of Nagaland. One son is an engineer and principal system analyst, and the youngest is a businessman based in California, USA. Arena is amazing in hospitality. Uh, I enjoy so much uh, visiting them, uh, both when they served in Balaso area, you know, in the mission compound, and also later on in their home in Dimapur, in Nagaland. I was very well cared for. And I should say, uh, there are a lot of guests going to the house, and including our offices of international ministries or international guests, and they have the same, same experience. We are not forgetting that because we are the beneficiaries of the gospel brought by the American uh, the missionaries uh, in various ways, uh, opening the eyes of the blind uh, to see many things which were unseen and thereby develop not only their physical life but also their spiritual life, bringing them to the feet of Jesus Christ and assure them the salvation forever, the life eternal. And so, uh, for that, we are really very really grateful and then uh, thankful to those people who came to us in person with risk of their life and also those who are at home sending them, giving their sacrificial offering to make the mission successful. <laughs>